We now turn to the f function, which is an alternative to the g function, and instead of using the event-to-event -event distribution, it focuses on the point-to-event distribution. So just to recap, um, in this terminology, points are reference points, and events are points where something happens with events. So the f um, function is a summary of the characteristics of the nearest neighbor distances between reference points to actual events. So we put a grid over our point pattern and for each of our reference points we find the closest event, take the distribution of all these distances and then construct a cumulative distribution just like for the G function. Because it is um, constructed from reference points, this function is also referred to as the empty space function. And as for the g function, you plot the estimated function against r, and again we'll be interested in figuring out what is the functional form of this um, f function under complete spatial randomness. And also, as in the case of uh, the g function, there are many types of edge corrections are basically the same. So it's exactly the same idea, but it is applied to the point to event nearest neighbor distances rather than the event to event nearest neighbors. Uh, under spatial randomness, the we can take the exact same logic as for the G function, and we find again that the uh, theoretical form of the f function under complete spatial randomness is 1 minus negative exponential lambda pi r square, where lambda is, again, the average intensity of the process. So it's very similar approach. The logic is the same as for the g function, but the difference is that we now take the nearest neighbor distances from reference points. For our Chicago supermarket example, it, it looks like, uh, like this. The theoretical function is the blue line. Um, the black line is the observed line, and the green and red dashed lines are different edge corrections. Again, we see that these edge corrections don't make a, a big difference in, in this particular case. And we also see that... Um, the curve, the black curve, is now not above the Poisson reference line, but is below the Poisson reference line. And we'll, we'll get back to that when we talk about the interpretation. So, very same principle. Uh, you see, actually, that the, uh, in this case, we recall that in the um, other example, the largest nearest neighbor distance was about 2,500. Here, it's more, almost 7,000. So, these are, this, of course, depends, uh, and this is something you can practice in the lab, depends on how fine-grained the grid is of the reference points, which is a variable in, in this calculation. So inference then, same logic as before. We will generate um, random point patterns. For every one of these uh, random point patterns, we will construct an f function. And then for every distance, we will sort the values and take the minimum and the maximum, which then um, allows us to construct a randomization envelope. Interesting to note, the interpretation is the opposite from the interpretation of the G. As we already saw, we, we sort of know by now that our uh, Chicago pattern is clustered, and the F function was below the reference function for Poisson, a complete spatial random line. And for inhibition or regular pattern, it is above the line. And so then significance is when it is actually below the envelope or above the envelope, uh, as the case may be. In our Chicago example, the gray um, area is the envelope. And we see, as, as we already knew, the black line is always under the theoretical line, but not always under the significantly under the envelope. And it, does, it is under the envelope for uh, 
distances over 4,000. So this suggests a clustering of the pattern. And as for the G function, we'll go to, through the same exercise and generate three um, patterns with specific known characteristics and then illustrate the F function for each of these cases. Uh, the first case is a random point pattern. We uh, see the black line is the F function. It tracks the red theoretical line very closely and is clearly inside the randomization envelope. So in this case, no discussion. This is a clearly spatially random pattern. Then we move to a clustered process, a Poisson clustered process, same as before. And now we see that the black line is always under the red line, which again suggests clustering, but it's not under the red line for the whole range of the distances. I mean, it's not under the envelope below the blue line for the whole uh, range of the distances. So again, we would um, this would be an indication of clustering, uh, at least in a range of distances. And then the third example is again a regular pattern using the Matern 2 inhibition process, and here we see the, the reverse. The black line is above the red line, but it isn't quite enough above the red line, so we couldn't conclude that this is significantly different from a spatially random pattern. So f function is the same logic as the g function, but two big differences. One, it's computed uh, by taking the nearest neighbor distances from reference points to the events. And secondly, the interpretation is the opposite of the g function with the f function below the reference line for complete spatial randomness, we have clustering with the f-function above the reference line for complete spatial randomness, we have a regular pattern or inhibition. Then our third function in the series is the j-function, and the j-function is actually a combination of the g and the f-function. And you might wonder why have another function? <coughs> well, the specific purpose of the j-function and the context in which it was developed, and, and there's a, the details you can find in a paper in von Lishout and Baddeley, is to connect the characteristics of the J function to specific models for spatial processes. And, and, and that is part of the modeling of spatial processes that we won't really get into, but it's... So, I mean, there is a reason why this J function was suggested, because it is uh, a much uh, cleaner connection, direct connection, with um, several theoretical spatial process models. Again, as before, the edge corrections are there in the G and the G and the F function. Uh, there are no, you know, specific edge corrections in the J function. They are actually already carried out in in the components. And the J function itself then is the ratio of the complements of the each of these functions. In the numerator we have the complement of the g function, in the denominator we have the complement of the f function. Um, because of its construction the reference for complete spatial randomness is actually one. So rather than a curve that changes with the value of the distance as we did for the, as we had for the g and the f function, now we'll have a horizontal line. And um, again, inference is too complicated to compute analytically, so we'll resort again to simulation and a randomization envelope. The interpretation is with a j value below the reference of 1, so j less than 1 suggests clustering, and that will be significant if it's below the randomization envelope and the j-value larger than 1 suggests regular pattern or inhibition, and it will be significant if it is outside the envelope. So the rationale, the interpretation, is very similar to the previous two cases. We use randomization envelope to assess significance. If the curve is below 1, it's um, 
clustering, it's above one, it's uh, a regular pattern. Now, the, um, the curve itself shows um, very irregular patterns at different distances, and this is used to characterize some of the processes. Uh, and in this case, we do see for the first time that the edge corrections actually do make a difference, uh, especially for the larger distances. So um, the reference, the, the blue dashed line, is a horizontal um, at 1, at the value of 1. The black curve is clearly below. The green curve is also below, except for the very largest distances. And then the red curve starts creeping up and actually goes above one for a given distance. This is actually uh, not an uncommon uh, pattern. So this, because the black line is below the horizontal blue line, would again suggest uh, clustering. When we um, add on our uh, randomization envelope, it becomes actually a little more difficult to interpret, at least at this scale. If you recall and you go to the previous graph, you see the the, the the range on the axes goes from basically 0.4 to 1.2, but with the randomization, we get really extreme values, especially for the larger distances. You see the range goes from uh, very small to 20, and because of that, it is very hard to see whether the black line is actually below the envelope or not. We would have to zoom in, which is what we, of course, could do. But uh, clearly the line is below the red horizontal and it is below the envelope, at least in a range of the distances uh, that are being considered. So same idea uh, as before. And again, we'll look at some artificially generated patterns. First, our random pattern and the black line basically tracks the horizontal line at 1. That's the red line. So there's no, at no point does it move out of the randomization envelope. Clearly not significant, clearly complete spatial randomness. The um, J function for our Poisson cluster process is below the red line throughout and below the envelope, at least for a range of the distances, so that would be clearly significant. And then finally, for our regular or inhibition pattern, uh, the Materan 2 process again, we see that the black line is above the red line and outside of the envelope, um, at least for a range of the distances. Um, we also see these kind of weird patterns at the, at the larger distances, which is quite characteristic of, of this function. So what we have considered here in this uh, section on nearest neighbor statistics is a principle for testing whether a point pattern deviates from complete spatial randomness. That principle is based on the computation of nearest neighbor distances. We distinguished between the distance from an event to the nearest other event and the distance from a reference point to the nearest event. And this resulted in three curves that represented the cumulative distribution of the nearest neighbor distances, the G um, curve for event to event distances, the F curve for point to event distances, and then the J curve that combines the two uh, together. And for each of these cases, we establish the, the curve for complete spatial randomness. For the G and the F, this changes with distance. For the J function, it's constant at 1. It's a horizontal. And then for each of these cases, we base inference on a randomization envelope and um, infer clustering or regular pattern. For the G function, above the curve is clustering below is regular, for the f function is the other way around, below the curve is clustering, above the curve is regular, and for the j function it's the same as for the f function, below the horizontal at 1 is clustering, above the horizontal at 1 is um, a regular pattern or inhibition. So that 
summarizes the approach based on nearest neighbor distances.